Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. Are you ready to get creative with us this week? Let's review our three basic rules that guide us through our exploration and play. Rule one is respect. We want to respect ourselves, anyone we're making with, our tools and making space, and the lands and waterways where we're making. How can you practice respect when you explore, play, and make? Rule two is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful, creative explorations are great, regardless of what it ends up looking like. Try to do things you've never tried before and ask yourself, what will happen if I... Rule number three is nothing is for keeps. Everything we make together is a test, or a draft, or creative playtime. We're just trying things out. What can you make or try today and then take apart or recycle? What can we learn by making and not keeping? These are our three rules for when we explore together every week. Okay, what will we explore together this week? Hello, and welcome to Art Starts Explores. My name is Alyssa, and I am the Gallery and Public Programs Manager at Art Starts in Schools. This month, we're exploring the theme of self-portraits. Self-portraits are anything that we make to show other people something about ourselves. When we take a photo or a selfie, of ourselves, we're capturing a moment in time of what we look like at a certain time. We can also make self-portraits by drawing or sketching or painting or sculpting um, versions of ourself. Self-portraits can um, show us in a realistic way, like in a photograph. They can also show us in a kind of abstract way or in a, a different way than what we look like in real life to show other people um, different parts of our personality or ways that we interact with other people or with the world. So today we're going to be exploring less realistic versions of ourselves, but showing more what kind of people we are like by exploring textures in our self-portraits today. So for this episode, um, our gallery facilitator and preparator, Kay Slater, sent me four photographs. And they told me that I could use these four photographs in any way that I want today in my exploration of self-portraits. Now I've just received these four photos and I'm not sure how I'm going to use them yet today, but we're going to explore that together. So the materials that we're going to need today are uh, a piece of paper, some mark makers. So mark makers are anything that you can use to make a mark on a piece of paper, like a pen or a pencil, a highlighter, a coloring marker. We're going to be using photos. So I'm going to be using the photos that Kay sent me, but you can use photos that are around your house, that are in books on your shelf, um, that are on a phone or computer that you have at home, um, or in a magazine, anywhere that you have pictures. 
And then the fourth thing on my materials list today is just a bunch of question marks. And you might be wondering why I put question marks because normally we have a general idea of what materials we're going to use each week. So the reason why I put question marks here today is because as we explore how we want to look at the textures and the photos that Kay sent me today, we're also going to imagine together how to make self-portraits from these photos. How do we use them, cut them, reshape them, change them to make them into something different? So I'm actually not sure what we're going to be exploring yet today. So for that reason, I don't have all of the items on my materials list because we're actually going to be exploring that together during this episode. So let's get started. Here are the four photos that I received from Kay. So the first one that you can see is a photo that has a grid mat on top of a table. There are four people surrounding this table. And on the table, on top of the grid mat, there are different wooden blocks. And one person has stacked these blocks to form the shape of, of what seems to be um, a pair of glasses. Another person has stacked blocks together to make what appears to be um, a little person or creature um, standing on the bottom right corner of the picture. So I'm going to use a piece of paper and a mark making tool to make some notes about this photo. So photo number one. Oh, it looks like my pen here is starting to run out of ink. So I'm going to use a different one. So I'm going to write once again, photo number one. So what textures do we notice in this picture? So the grid mat is smooth. So we have smooth texture. We have some wooden blocks that are also smooth. They have some, maybe not rough edges, but hard edges. What else do we have in this photograph? There are fabrics on people's clothes that are soft. And I'm going to add one more adjective to describe this picture. Um, and I'm going to say that there are a lot of flat surfaces. So to describe the textures in this picture, I have smooth, hard edges, soft, and flat surfaces. What words did you make a note of to describe this picture? Or if you're using a different photo that you found in your home, what are the textures in the picture and what words would you use to describe them? Okay. So moving on to photo number two. So photo number two, here we have a gardener who is clipping uh, some vines that are also thorny. Uh, the person is wearing a green shirt, a red uh, hoodie or sweater. Um, some yellow gardening gloves, and the plant is a vibrant green. So this is also a very interesting picture. And again, some, some new textures now in, in this picture. 
So what can we see? What, what do we notice about the description of this photo? So I'm gonna write the word thorny on my piece of paper because the vine that is being cut is thorny. Uh, there's lots of really bright colors. So I'm gonna write the word vibrant to describe the materials, the textures in this photograph. Again, there are some um, soft fabrics uh, because the person in this photo is wearing um, a soft sweater, what seems to be a soft t-shirt. So again, I have the word soft. And although there's a plant in this picture, it's actually a photo that's that's been taken in an indoor space. And I can see the walls and the floor seem to be hard surfaces. So we have some conflicting textures here, soft, hard, vibrant, thorny. Okay, moving along to photo number three. All right. Um, I love this picture. Um, because when Kay first sent it to me, I had to really zoom in to figure out what it was. Um, but this is actually a picture of a bunch of pool noodles that have been cut up into tiny little pieces and spread across the floor of what appears to be a gallery um, or a, a white box room. So um, I have a bunch of different little pool noodles that are scattered around the floor. They are orange, pink, and blue. Um, and if you were to walk into this room, you would certainly um, either have to walk around the pool, pool noodles or, um, or you would probably just slip <laughs> onto the floor. Um, okay, so here are the textures that we have. We've got some spongy materials. Pool noodles tend to be spongy. Uh, they also float. So these materials are ones that float. Um, I'm going to use the word, um, they're very colorful. So I could use the word vibrant. I could also use the word contrast because there's lots of color contrast. There's some dark colors, some light colors. And uh, the other word that I'm going to use to describe this texture is that there is a pattern. Uh, although they're pool noodles on the ground, they haven't just been thrown and scattered onto the ground, but they've actually been laid out in a pattern so that there are orange ones in certain spots, pink ones in certain spots, and blue ones in certain spots to make these patterns of pool noodles. All right, so now my last photo, photo number four. Okay, I love this photo. It seems like this tree in the picture is leaning onto the rock for support. Um, it's a very beautiful photo. So what textures do we have in this picture? Or again, if you're working with your own photos and not with the same ones that I'm working on, what textures, what, what is unique about the photo that you have in front of you? So in this picture, both the tree and the rock are rough materials. Um, they are both very heavy. Um, 
Again, to contrast these materials, I have some light grass um, that would be quite a bit softer. Um, and the other word that I'm going to put here is that these materials are natural. Uh, they're growing outside and it's of the four pictures so far, it's the only one that actually has been taken in an outdoor space. Um, so although there are natural materials in all four of these photos, uh, these are the only ones so far that aren't indoors. Okay. So here I have um, descriptions of four different pictures. And now that I have this list of adjectives and you have a list of words to describe either the same photos that I had or the photos that you're working with from home. Now that I have this list, I'm going to put a star next to um, the words that I found really interesting. So in my first photo with the the grid and the blocks. Um, the thing that stood out to me the most um, was that these blocks, uh, which are smooth, um, which have hard edges, um, all the objects in this picture are actually stackable. So I'm gonna make my one word for this photo to describe the objects in this photo to be stackable. I'm going to keep this in mind for the self-portrait that I'm going to make later. It's going to include something stackable. Now in my second photo, so we had the thorny uh, vines, we had the vibrant colors, we had soft fabrics, we had the hard wall and floor. What I found most interesting about this photo was this thorny um, Part to it. The fact that the this nice vibrant branch actually is thorny. So I'm going to be looking for something that is, let's say, pokey. So something you could use to poke something with. So again, my self-portrait is going to have something now stackable, something pokey. The third photo that I had had um, the pool noodles, which were spongy, which float, contrasting colors, um, and it was laid out in a pattern. Um, and what I found most interesting were the pool noodles, uh, which had this sort of spongy quality in which can float. So the word that I'm going to use to describe this picture overall um, is that the textures were, uh, let's say, floaty. So we're going to have something that floats, a material that floats in our self-portrait. Um, and then the last and fourth photo was the one of the tree leaning up against the rock. And these textures were rough, heavy, uh, the grass surrounding the tree and rock were light, uh, the materials were all natural and outdoors. Um, so the last thing that I'm going to put here, I'm actually just going to describe this one as outdoor, let's say outdoorsy. So my self-portrait's now going to include something that's stackable, something that is pokey, something that floats, and something from the outdoors. So what are some things that are stackable that we might have in our homes or surrounding our maker space today? Uh, things that are stackable could be books or cards or cups, um, plates, um, clothes are stackable. What do you have in your space that's stackable? 
uh, that you could use to shape something today. What do you have in your space that is pokey, that has kind of hard edges or that's thorny? Um, hmm. There are keys in my space that are pokey. Um, I have jewelry, so earrings that I have. Uh, I love to collect earrings and all of the earrings that I have in some way or another are pokey. Um, I have different utensils like forks or spoons uh, that are pokey. I have picture frames that are pokey. What do you have that has this texture? Um, then the third thing is looking for something that is that floats or that it has a kind of spongy quality. Um, so I know that I'm in my home, I have a sponge that I could use in my exploration. Um, I have a, what else do I have that floats? <laughs> um, I don't have a pool noodle. I wish that I had a pool noodle in my home. Um, I have maybe flower petals that float. I have um, a um, armband that floats that a person could use to uh, swim with or exercise with. So I'm going to have to look for something that floats. And then what are some things that I could find outdoors? So around my apartment, I could probably find some sticks on the ground, some leaves that have fallen from trees. I could find some rocks. Um, there would certainly be dirt surrounding uh, the place where I live. So I'm now going to go and find objects or things that fit into these four different categories. So the things that we're going to find we're not going to be cutting up today or gluing together um, or um, sort of taking apart in any way. We're not going to be ruining any of these objects that we're going to be working with. So um, don't worry about, for example, if you're looking for something stackable and you find a stack of plates, we're not going to be breaking plates today, but we're going to be using them in, in creating our self-portrait. So you can go ahead and look for objects that fit into these four categories. And I'm going to do the same. I'm going to give us one minute to go ahead and look for these four different things. And then we're going to come back and we're going to continue exploring this activity together. All right, here we go. All right, so these are the objects that I came up with. When I was searching uh, my home for something stackable, I found these small stackable plates. So that's what I found that's stackable. I also found this deck of Sushi Go cards, which are stackable. So these are my two stackable items. 
Then um, when I was looking for something pokey, um, I found a bunch of keys that have these pokey edges. So they're different than the thorns that were on the vines in uh, the picture that we uh, described, but they're still pokey. And I ended up going into my earring collection and found earrings that have different pokey um, edges to them. For things that float, um, I got a sponge. Um, I also got these sort of armbands, which also happen to light up. So these ones float in water. And then I went outside and I found some things off of the ground. I found these really vibrant um, red leaves, which I thought were really beautiful and very interesting. Um, and I also picked up this branch that had fallen off a tree uh, and was in the alley behind my apartment. So I thought this one was kind of interesting and something that I'd like to explore today. All right, so these are the objects that I have to work with. Now, how am I going to use these objects to make a self-portrait? What about these objects can represent me, Alyssa? So this little sticky that I showed at the beginning with my name on it, in a way, is a self-portrait. This isn't exactly what I look like. My face is not bright pink. Um, I don't always have a side smile there. My hair doesn't exactly look like this, but it's a simple sketch that I made um, as a self-portrait um, of a, a kind of variation of what I look like. Now, using these materials is going to be, again, this sort of interesting way to show myself or to reveal what kind of a person I am through different textures. What are these textures? How do these textures describe us? So let's think in textures today. Thinking about these materials. So perhaps this sponge in a way could show parts of me um, that enjoy daydreaming, floating, imagining, um, the parts of me that are very adaptable to change. I've lived in a lot of different places and a sponge soaks up lots of water. Um, and throughout my life, because I've moved to so many different places, I've learned to soak up um, different languages and different ways of living and interacting with the world. So that could be a way that that sponge represents me. These also float, but these textures are quite different. And these ones, when I think about them, I think because they're, they're both sort of these bright colors, they draw a lot of attention to themselves and they say, hello, this is where I am. Um, that maybe these show the sides of me that enjoy um, performing or being on stage. I don't really like being the center of attention but I do like being um, presenting things in front of people um, when I have the chance to. Um, these stackable playing cards maybe show the parts of me that enjoy um, connecting with other people, playing games. They're also very smooth and colorful. What does stacking cards say about you? How can the objects that are in front of you describe what kind of person you are? 
I also have a bunch of earrings here that have all kinds of different shapes and sizes. And I like that each one is kind of going in a different direction. Maybe for these earrings or these shapes, perhaps they describe the parts of me um, that like to explore, going in different directions, trying new things. I have a whole stack of keys here. These were one of my pokey objects. And keys sometimes show the like different parts of who we are, the different spaces that we spend our time. So this one is a key that I use to get the art starts. Here are some keys that get me into my home. This is a key to my bike lock, um, which shows that I really like to bike a lot around the city. So these keys uh, help me to interact with different places that I like to go to. These leaves on the ground are leaves that have fallen on the ground that are bright colors. Perhaps they show different parts of us that we learn to let go of, but that we still remember. So as time moves on in our lives and we try, on, we try uh, different things or we move to different places, sometimes we let go of parts of ourselves. These are the objects that I have. Oh, and I also have my massive stick. This one I really like, even though this one I also found on the ground. Um, one thing about me is that I love to climb. I, Growing up, I always loved climbing trees, um, and I still really love rock climbing um, and doing that both inside and outdoors. So this little branch, which looks almost like a mini tree, um, reminds me of my love of climbing. So what do these objects, or what are the objects that you found in your home, what do they reveal about who you are? How can the textures um, or what the objects represent say something about you? So as we think about this, we're gonna try making self-portraits um, a couple different times. So I'm gonna put these objects aside for now, just out of view but in a place where I can still access them while we're making. Um, and I encourage you to do the same so that you clear up a little bit of space for your making today. All right. So using these objects, I'm going to try to make something that in an abstract way looks like me or represents me. Um, so I'm gonna start with my leaves. And I'm gonna use my leaves as feet in my image. I'm gonna see how this goes. And to create my body, I'm going to use the sponge because as I said, the sponge was, was the object that kind of represented soaking things up or, or curiosity, loving to learn. So that's gonna be at my core. Um, Gonna use some keys maybe to make my arms. And I could even make my arms longer if I want by adding more keys to them. I'm going to make my face using hmm, 
maybe I'll use one of these little cards. So my face is going to be these two little tempura. And I'm going to make my hair using these earrings. So maybe, maybe what I'll do is put my my little earrings around my tempura face and make it into hair. Now, this looks nothing like what I actually look like in real life, but I've used these different objects that I've identified show different parts of who I am to make this self-portrait. So this was a self-portrait that I started with. And this is a self-portrait that I've made out of lots of different textures. What did you make with the objects in front of you? What kind of a self-portrait did your piece turn into? Does it look anything like what you actually look like in real life? Do the textures in it feel like the textures that um, that you that your body has? So my body has smooth skin. In some places, my skin is maybe a little bit rougher. I have nails that are hard. Um, I have hair that is soft. But those textures, again, are really different than these ones, because in this, I ended up with lots of textures that are hard, pokey, objects that are stackable, things I found outdoors, um, and also all kinds of different shapes that I found from my earring collection. All right, so I'm gonna take this self-portrait apart, and I'm going to try a second one. Okay, so taking my feet apart, my arms, my hair, my tempura face, <laughs> and my sponge body. So starting from scratch again. This time, I'm going to start with the tree as my body. Now already this object is much more dramatic um, than the sponge that I started with in the first one. It takes up a lot more space. Um, but it's going to be the sort of basis for the shape of my body. So in this one, I like that this object kind of represented my love of climbing because it almost seems like these could be my arms and legs and like in this self-portrait I have lots of different arms and legs and as a climber having multiple arms and legs that could stretch in lots of different directions would actually be a lot of fun because you would be able to climb so many more things um, if you had this ability to you know move different arms and legs. So in this one I'm going to imagine that I actually have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten arms and legs. All right, that's a lot. Um, and I'm going to, in this one, I'm going to actually add, hmm. Perhaps in this self-portrait, because I was making one about um, how this object showed my love of climbing, but I also talked about how some of these objects represented how I've traveled and lived in a few different places. Um, I didn't grow up in Canada. I grew up in Sao Paulo in Brazil. And then I also have moved to different places um, I moved to different places as a teenager and then as an adult. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach all the different things, maybe these little earrings 
as to show perhaps things that I've picked up along the way. So as my little self-portrait has the self-portrait of myself as this tree person has traveled or moved to different places, I've picked up different languages, different things along the way. So I'm going to add my earrings as these objects. I'm going to also play with these keys. And this is just my self-portrait. I want you to think about the objects that you have there in front of you and to think about what they represent about you. How can you move them around and shape them into something so that they tell people, they show people something about what kind of person you are? There we go. This is my little tree climber with multiple limbs who has picked up different things in different places. And hmm, is there anything that I want to add to this? The one thing that I don't really have in this self-portrait is, is anything that represents my face. But Again, because self-portraits can be abstract, they don't have to look anything like what we look like. And of course, this branch with all these earrings and keys looks nothing like what I actually look like in real life, but maybe it doesn't need my face on it. Maybe this self-portrait is just about, it's just focusing on things that I've picked up um, from living in different places. So I think this is my completed self-portrait number two and i'm going to slowly take apart the pieces that i've added here what did i learn from using materials that i don't normally work with so i've never made a self-portrait out of leaves or keys or um, playing cards earrings, a sponge, um, and a branch. I've never used any of these items before to make a self-portrait of myself. One thing that I really liked from using these different textures was that before we started making today in my materials list, I had a bunch of question marks and I didn't know exactly where our exploration was going to go today. I didn't know what I would end up making. I didn't know which objects I would end up finding and working with today. Um, and that's made my exploration really interesting. And I hope that yours was just as fun um, as you worked with different objects and materials and textures um, from around your home or maybe from outside of your home. Um, and I really enjoyed how, even though when I was first looking for these objects, I was just looking for things that kind of had similar textures as the textures that we had in those four pictures that Kay sent us today to work with. Even though I was just looking for things that, for example, in one of the pictures where the, the vine was thorny, I was looking for something pokey. And so I came up with earrings. I was just looking for objects. Um, but when I actually started making with them, suddenly these objects took on a new meaning. What had a certain meaning uh, before kind of took on a new meaning. Um, because, for example, even when I was looking for this sponge, originally I was just looking for something that floated in water. I found this sponge, and then when I was making my self-portrait, I realized how much this sponge represents what kind of person I am. So what did you learn from your objects today? What did you take out? What did you take from your exploration today that you want to bring with you uh, when you explore again in the future? So I'm gonna clean up my space um, and all the objects that I used, and I'm going to return uh, these leaves and the stick um, back outside to the ground where I found them. Um, and although I'm cleaning up my space, I'm going to take with me 
what I learned today uh, so that I can keep those ideas with me next time that we explore together. So that's the end of our workshop for today and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. See you again next week.